You are watching an Al Bear review. Cue the music. <laughs> ah. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to my channel. You know the vibes. Happy Friday, man. I'm here with the How to Get Away with Murder recap. I am so happy to show back. And at the same time, I'm so sad. This is the last season. Man, I'm about to start reviewing reality TV shows because I just can't get into them like I do, you know what I'm saying, just these regular, good, script-written TV shows, man. But last night episode, let me get into it. It, 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 it was, it was kind of, uh, you know, for a series, a season premiere. You feel what I'm saying? It was kind of, uh, you know, it wasn't all that. But I do got some thoughts on it that I want to throw out there. So, whew, all right. So the show kicks off with Annalise that checked herself in the rehab under a, a fake name, and it's Karen. And um, it's this lady there, the therapist. What well, before I get to the therapist and everybody there, they, they you know they trying to get Annalise to open up. You know they trying to get her to participate in the therapy activities. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Um, so a constant theme throughout this show was giving us a flashback of what led Annalise to drive herself to go to rehab, right? So basically once Tegan called her, told her that Emmett has just, they just killed Emmett, as well as, you know, Laurel and Crystal Ball, or whatever the baby name again, caught up, get snatched up or whatever. So she was at the bar, T uh, Tegan called, and thing, you know, she started drinking, she was partying, then my girl did a, li a line of coke. Let me tell y'all something. Before I go any further, we got to stop and appreciate um, Viola Davis, man. She got to get her flowers, her roses. And this woman, no, I'm talking about, man, she give it to you every single scene. She she does, man. She I, I'm in love with her, man. And it's part of the reason that I'm upset that this show has to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, the Scandal, Scandal was my favorite show, especially when it was just uh, around... Olivia Pope fixing things, and I and for whatever reason, man, Shonda, she does, man, look at man. She, I stopped watching Grey's a long time ago, but as far as her black leading ladies and her, her, you know, her series, a TV series, she do a great job of picking, picking out the ones that are give it to us. You get what I'm saying? It's just give it to us. So I just had to give Viola her flowers and her roses right there. So anyways, like I said, she did a line of coke. She turned up so much that she OD had to go to the hospital so much she in rehab, right? So the, the uh, therapist had them do this exercise where they uh, envisioned their funeral and who all would be at their funeral. And uh, lo and behold, at her funeral, while she was envisioning it, uh, Laurel's son, Cristobal, or Chris, he came, opened the casket with a gun and told her to stay dead, bitch, and shot her in the face with it. Feel me? Okay, cool, fine, I love it. And it was weird because I was like, it really made me feel like this is how, which is unfortunate. I would love to see her just walk off into the sunset. But watching this episode made me feel like that she's going to die some type of way. It probably going to be over stress because her and them damn kids and et cetera, et cetera, it's too much. But it made me feel like she's going to, her character is going to die and that's going to be the end of Annalise Keaton. So that was it. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to get through the therapy stuff. So. Uh, this is her roommate name is Sarah, and, and she's picking and poking and picking and poking, trying to get Annalise, or should I say Karen, to open up to her. And so it was a point in the episode where uh, Annalise just couldn't take it no more. And so she turned over and she read Sarah like, you know, you this, you that, you this, you that. And so Sarah broke down and she was just like, I hate being a mom. I hate my kids. This is my eighth, ninth, tenth time being here. When I go home, my kids still there. I'm a horrible person. Next thing you know, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, Annalise felt like, wow, like, I didn't tell who I really am. My name is not Kim, I'm Annalise Keaton, and everybody think I killed my husband. In fact, I didn't. I helped cover it up. That pissed me all the way off because now we got to deal with this hell for Sarah this season. And for me personally, when I'm watching these TV shows, that I have been investing my time over the years to just stay up to 11 o'clock and watch. I hate when they introduce new characters the final season. Now we got another piece of the puzzle that don't belong. And, and you know, it just pisses me off. So anywho, the next morning, uh, 
Cam, I mean, Sarah's missing, and at least see the windows open. She thinks she done went out and told on her. She go downstairs, and next thing you know, we see it was a guy there. He attacked uh, one of the chefs or the police there, and next thing you know, at least find Sarah. And it appears that maybe they're going to be girlfriend and girlfriend, okay? I don't know what it is with, with Shonda trying to make Annalise such a lady lover, but it's the final season. We ain't got time for her romance. Like, that's all I'm saying. So, anyways, uh, moving on. Also, this episode, uh, Tegan is, is pretty much the only one in uh, uh, Copeland and Gold or whatever the uh, office name Annalise works in. And so, she pretty much, Annalise, eyes and ears in the office. So, she called Annalise. They give her a little a bland update that was basically was like I was just, I, I hoping you had your phone tucked away in your bra, but you know I can't wait to see you and all that type of stuff like that. So that was that, and um, you know I'm gonna get into it now. So also this episode, Nate he goes and visits Bonnie and basically asks Bonnie like who is the me that's conducting the autopsy on uh, on Emmy. So of course she didn't want to tell him, but she ended up telling him. So Nate went down to the, you know, the, the, the autopsy building. You feel me? Had a conversation and find out that the autopsy is not being done in Philadelphia. It's being done in London, and Tegan signed off on it. So he goes to pay Tegan a visit. At this visit, he's asking Tegan just questions to kind of read it. You feel what I'm saying? He was like, you know, London, you know. Doesn't that sound cover up? And she was just like, look, they're my bosses. I do what I'm asking, do what I'm told. And basically now we got to deal with is Tegan playing us. And listen, let me tell you, let me tell you something. When Tegan was first introduced, I was rooting for her to get rolled off the show. You understand what I'm saying? But then when she crossed over to Annalise Keaton's side and then joined the team, I was like, okay, she good. She can stay. But I don't like questioning people who I thought that had nice, you know, came over to the good side, came over to the winning side. Now we got to question Tegan as if she playing us just to kill Emma so she could become the new whatever position Emmett held at the law firm. So Nate doing his investigation, he looking into Tegan. Um, in Mexico City, something happened down there, so I'm sure he's gonna uncover something. But um, it's crazy because I like Tegan. I felt like, listen, her, because let me tell you, Annalise needs somebody that she can lean on from time to time to help her deal with all these problems these damn kids be causing, okay? Because we know we can depend on them. So, I thought Tegan was gonna be it, but now nah, it's just making even more sense. Annalise gonna, gonna die of a heart attack or stroke or something like that. It's just pissing me off just even thinking about it. So moving on. So um, I guess we'll talk about these kids. So this episode, they introduced, well, let me go ahead and say that. Um, uh, Oliver and Frank, Oliver and Asher, um, they trying to track Laurel phone and all this type of stuff. They know it's not gonna happen, right? Okay, cool, fine. So in the midst of it, um, I'm trying to remember correctly. Frank was there. Somehow or another, Oliver thought it'd be a good idea to tell Frank that Laura had them signed papers saying they'd be guardians of, of, of Cristobal or whatever the little damn boy name or something was to happen to her. You understand what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't really, really care about that little boy because he was never important to me. You feel what I'm saying? But Oliver's character is changing this season. And I like it. Oliver wants to do, use his IT brain for greatness. He wants to tap into a different security system and find out men who works for Laurel Brother so that they can use Frank to go and intimidate them and beat them up so they can get answers. Kind of like, no, we don't do that. No, we need to do that. We need answers. We need answers. You feel what I'm saying? Because I like that approach because the fact that we got to sit around and wait for Annalise to do everything, and now we got to question Tegan, these kids need to bring some 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 presentable ideas to the table. And that's the best one I heard all episode. Michaela want to call the cops. Now, eventually, in the end of the episode, Bonnie and Frank called the cops and reported her missing. But, like, these kids, they do not think at all. So, anywho, moving on, um, let me see what else I want to touch on. Uh, yes, okay, so, anywho, Annalise leaves the rehab facility. Now, while she was there, it was this 
there this uh this uh coping method to basically write down all of the words and names that the people in your circle or family or whatever uh, describes you as selfish and she had whore, slut, uh, vicious, bitch, this, that, third, all that, all them cuss words was up in there. And basically the lady was just wanting to get a bad and just beat them out and you know, say that, hey, that ain't me, I'm not this, I'm not that. And so, and at least looking right, looking like they were crazy. But Lord and behold, later in the episode, she went in her room, she did the uh, exercise, and she felt wonderful. So when she came home, uh, she she had Nate come pick her up, and she texts all the kids, bring y'all, you know what's over here. And she had the kids do that, and they all was like, they felt better, they felt better about, you know, getting all those things out. Now, let me, let me reverse it a little bit. So early in the episode, Oliver and, um, Oliver and uh, what's his boyfriend named Connor was doing some type of research. Now I don't know how, I, and maybe I may have to go back and watch um, a couple episodes of last season to figure this out. But they, you know, Michaela been talking about wanting to find her biological family, and so I don't know how these cats done it, but they found a newspaper article when Annalise Keaton was a pre-law student. She helped uh, clear. Uh, Michaela's father, his name is Dwight Harp Halpern or something like that, Halpern of uh, fraud charges. So these cats done connected Annalise to knowing Michaela's father. And, 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 and let me say this, it pissed me off. I'm not interested in this storyline because let me tell you this, I don't want it to turn into a pity, excuse me, a pity party for Annalise and, and finding out how she got these kids on her team. You feel what I'm saying? I like I just think, and and obviously Al Asher was there at the end of the episode when they was at Annalise's house after they did this exercise to get everything out on the table. Asher spilled the beans and now Michaela pissed off. But I just don't see the importance of the, or, or, or like, let's not introduce Michaela Daddy. Like, what good is that going to do us? You like, like, come on, like, we, this is the final season. I don't even know what the possible storyline going to be this season. Nate Senior's dead. Emmett is dead. The only thing left is Laurel and her baby is missing. And Annalise is pretty much telling everybody that we can forget about Laurel. She always thinks about herself. And so it wouldn't surprise her if Laurel had this thing planned because the heat was getting thick. Which makes sense because, you know, Laurel is like that. But the fact that we're going to introduce Michaela's biological father and at least as a pre-law student, and at least in, at least in her late four, that was twenty something years ago. It just like I, I can't, man. I can't. I, I'm just not a fan of it, man. And I just feel like we could have took it. And like I said, it was the first episode, and it was kind of, eh, you know what I'm saying. But I know it's gonna get good. I know it's gonna get good. But that's pretty much the episode, all in all. Um, them kids are already getting. Oh, I forgot about this. Gabriel, mom. I remember last season. <coughs> The FBI called Gabriel Mom. This is another thing that's gonna piss me off. So it appears we're going to introduce Gabriel's mother this season, aka Anna Sam's Keating, baby mama, mistress, and all that. So she called Gabriel while her, while him and Michaela was up there making their relationship official. And basically was like, yeah, my son at the University of Virginia or Washington or whatever. And you know, so basically, they done told her the truth, and she done caught him up in the line. Next week, she going to make an appearance in Annalise. So, I, I just thought, you know, I'm just not a fan of it. And then, you know, she also had uh, Sam Keaton, um, his uh, his file, his his, his uh, police file or whatever. I forget my mind, like, early in the morning. But I don't know, man. I'm... I'm like I said, it, the final season, I don't like to be introduced to new characters that I got the, I already hate from the get-go cover, the show about to go off. You feel me? So I, I, I already hate it. But it's gonna be a good season, cause I know, I know, I know, I know Shonda gonna, gonna, gonna leave us with a bang. Um, but uh, it was a, it was a uh, episode, but I can't wait for next week. I know it's gonna turn up even more. But until next time, if I miss anything, let me know down just in uh, the comment section below. Happy Friday, I'll holler at you guys later, peace.